Good day and welcome to another video. My name is Pastor Lawrence and today we talk about a very important topic that says fear not. Now let's start with a prayer. Father, thank you today that we can talk about this very important topic that says fear not. And Father, I pray, Lord, that through this message and through this sermon, Father, that you will help my brothers and sisters, Lord, to not fear and to be encouraged. And I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Lawrence. Welcome to today's video. And we're going to talk about fear not. So let's read the first point. God is with you. Therefore, you should not fear. Joshua 1 verse 9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, wheresoever thou go. My friend, do you have some fear in your life? I believe you do nowadays with all the things going on, the virus, the wars, financial stuff. There's a lot of things that we can do be afraid of, but yet the Bible says that you need to be strong and have a good courage. Why? Because the Lord thy God is with thee. Wonderful. Psalm 118 verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Who is on your side? The Lord is on your side, my friend. Why will you fear? Isaiah 12 verse 2. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Wonderful. God is greater than your enemies and he will keep you. Let's look at 1 John 4 verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Who is in you? You remember we talked about that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit, the very God who made this whole universe, the God of Abram, the God of Isaac and Jacob and Lawrence and Freddy and whoever is watching this video, the God that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Man, we have nothing to fear. Luke 10 verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power to do what? To tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. These words are in red because this is what Jesus said. Jesus said that I have given you power. Jesus gave you power, my friend. To tread on serpents and scorpions. To tread on the circumstances in your life caused by the devil. And over all the power of the enemy. That enemy is the devil. And nothing, not some things, nothing shall by any means hurt you. These are the words of Jesus Christ himself. The Lord promises you peace. Let's read John 14 verse 27. Again, these words are read because... It's the words of Jesus himself. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Wow. I know you might think, Lawrence, um, what are you talking about? Don't you know what's going on around us every day? But here Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. And let it not be afraid. I mean, just trust Him. Galatians 5 verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Yes, you have. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. And the very fruit, the very outflow of the Holy Spirit is love. Do you need love? You have it. Do you, do you need joy? Maybe you don't have it, but you have it. Do you have peace? Well, there you have it. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. 
It's all in you. It's all by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, it is not by your own power. It's not by your own strength, but it is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Trusting God overcomes fear. 2 Kings 6 verse 14 to 17. Now this is the story about Elisha and I love it. Let's read. Therefore sent he thy horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. 2 Kings 6 verse 15. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both of horses and chariots. And he seven said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? You know, the servant went outside. He looked with the natural eye and he saw horses and chariots and he was afraid. And you might be looking with the natural eye at your bank balance or your health or your marriage, whatever. 2 Kings 6 verse 16. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Oh, I love this. This is a very, very old scripture, thousands of years ago. And Elijah used these words that just said, fear not. As you can see, it's, it is on bold because I want to tell you this, fear not, fear not. 2 Kings 6 verse 17, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. My friend, my prayer today is that the Lord will open your eyes and that you will see the horses and the chariots of fire where round about Elisha. Now let's change that. I want to put my name in there. And the horses and chariots of fire round about Lawrence. The horses and chariots round about whatever your name is. Put your name in there. My friend, we cannot see them with our natural eyes, but I believe that there are chariots of fire around us every day to protect us, to keep us safe, man. We serve the most powerful God. I pray that your eyes will be opened. And I also pray that my eyes will be opened, that we can see who is with us and who is around us. Examples of courage and fearlessness in danger. Let's look at a few examples from the Bible. Do you remember the story of the men in the fire? In Daniel 3 verse 14 to 17, you can read it. Sadrach, Michel and Abednego. Now these guys were thrown in the fire because they did not bow their knees to the idols the king created. And they just said, we, we are not afraid. You can throw us into the fire if you want. And they were bound, as you know the story, they were thrown in the fire. And the very next moment when the king looked through, I don't know, the window of the oven or whatever, he saw four men and they were unbound. You know the story. Who was the fourth guy? It was Jesus. It was Jesus himself or the Lord himself that came to save them. And the other thing is they were no longer bound. Now, what is your oven and what is your bondage and what is your fire? And what is it that, that you've been thrown into? Well, my friend, there's somebody with you in that fire and his name is Jesus Christ. Knowing it could cost him his life, Daniel refused to compromise his faith in God. Daniel 6 verse 4 to 10. We know the story. Daniel was in the palace. The men were jealous. They let the king make this big new commandment that said, you cannot pray to any God but me. And so Daniel just kept on praying. He opened his windows. He wasn't afraid. He didn't go into his prayer closet and close the door and pray it in secret. He just kept on praying. And this led him to the lion's den, hungry lions waiting for somebody to eat. And as you know the story, he was thrown into the lion's den, ready to be devoured. But again, their mouths were locked because Jesus was there. 
And I just think that lions look at Daniel and thought, my God, I want to eat him. <laughs> I'm hungry. But the Lord said, no, the Lord kept, kept him safe. And as you know the story, the evil men became lunch. So this is just a wonderful thing. I don't know. I don't know exactly how we should do this. I don't know if we go through these times, you know, like Daniel, shall we just um, open the door and pray or do whatever? But all I know is that Jesus is with us. Now we have David that killed Goliath. 1 Samuel verse 17. You can go and read the story. Anyways, what is the Goliath in your life? What is the giant that's standing against you today? What is the thing that telling you, come here so that I can kill you, so that I can feed you to the birds, as Goliath said. And Daniel said, I'm not coming to you in my own might. I'm coming to you in the power of the Lord. And he took a rock and a sling and he killed Goliath with a little rock and a sling. And that is exactly my prayer for you today. That big Goliath in your life, that big giant that's looking at you every day, that temptation, that thing that keeps you awake at night, those worries, your marriage, whatever. I just want you to change from going in your own strength. And like a David, do they say, not in my own strength anymore. I cannot do it by myself anymore. I will go to this Goliath in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ who paid the full price for you. I did it a few times in my life. Just recently, we needed new accommodation. We needed new apartment, a new place to stay. And I looked everywhere, just couldn't find a place. I remember the Friday night, I just gave up and said, God, I'm finished. I will no longer look for a place. And that very same night, we got this beautiful place that we're living in now. God helped me. Hallelujah. Some causes of fear. Number one, a lack of faith and trust in God and his word. Matthew 8 verse 26. And he said unto them, Why are you fearful? Are you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. Mark 4 verse 40. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? I don't want Jesus to ask us this question. How is it that you have no faith? And from a human's point of view, I know sometimes things look terrible. I know even in my own life, I don't see a solution. I don't see an outcome. I just see a storm. But yeah, Jesus said, you have no faith. God, I pray that you will give us more faith. Point two, looking at circumstances and conditions in your life. Well, a very good example was Peter, who was walking on the sea. He saw the wind. He was afraid and began to sink. You can read this in Matthew 14. You know, Jesus came walking on the water. And Peter said, God, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, walk. And he walked on water, my friend. We all know the story. But when he looked around and he saw the waves, he began to sink. He started to worry. He started to stress. And today I just pray that the Lord Jesus himself will command you to walk on the, that very storm in your life. And then I pray that you will keep your eyes on Jesus so that he can save you, so that he can help you, so that you don't sink like Peter did. Matthew 14 verse 30. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Wow. Okay. So there was Peter. Jesus said, walk on the water. He did. He looked. He saw the waves. He sank. But he didn't stop there. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And yes, I think it's wonderful to walk on water. I think it's wonderful to be in, in that place where you can trust and believe in the Lord so mightily that you can walk on water. But sometimes and most of us reach that point where you sink. And there's something more. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Why don't you right now cry with me? Why don't you right now just say, Lord, save me? I know this message is for you. 
I know this message is for you watching me because as I prepared for this and I looked through what I can preach about today, brothers and sisters, I saw this word, fear not. And I just want you to pray with me right now. Let's pray just this quick, simple prayer. Let's pray, Father, I pray, Lord, that you will save us, save us from whatever that thing is, whatever those waves are in our life. Jesus, save us. Amen. That is as simple as that. Just pray. Just pray. Say, Lord, please save me. The storm on the Sea of Galilee throws the disciples into fear. You know, in Mark 4, verse 37 to verse 40, let's read that. Mark 4, verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. Verse 38, And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep, on a pillow. And they awaked him, and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Verse 39, And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is that that you have no faith? Now let's read this again and apply it to our lives. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. Your life is the ship. The storm is the things going on. And sometimes our lives get full, full of fear and full of storms. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep. On a pillow. I love this. You know, Jesus was in the ship, in the storm, but he was asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, cares thou not that we perish? Well, there is good news, my friend. Your boat, your ship might be in the greatest of storms, but Jesus is asleep on a pillow. <laughs> I don't know if he's asleep on a pillow in your boat, but in this boat he was asleep. Jesus was peaceful in the midst of the storm. And the good news is just that Jesus is in the boat. Mark 39, And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. My friend, you're not alone in the storm. You're not alone in the boat. Cry unto Jesus, as I said, I would say, awake him. Okay, God is not sleeping, but with your prayer, call, call, call. And Jesus will stand up in your storm, in your boat, in your life, in your marriage, in that situation and say, peace, be still, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Right now, as we read this verse, I just felt like the wind ceased and a great calm through the power of the word will come to your life. Not because of me, not because of anything, because of the word of God, and because Jesus is still with us. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? My friend, why are you so fearful? Yes, I know, I'm also human like you. I understand, we understand <laughs> that boats get full, that boats get into storms and stuff like that. But Jesus was like, why are you so fearful? God, because there's no money in my bank. Or God, because my marriage is in trouble. Or God, I'm sick. And Jesus said, how is that you have no faith? Oh my goodness. I can feel the Lord ask us, where is your faith? Where is your faith? Just trust in me. Just believe me. I, that's why God is there. That is what he said. Pray. Pray at all times. Trust and believe. I just feel like we need to get back to faith where we say, okay, I don't know how to handle this. I don't know what to do next, but I will not be fearful and just carry on with life. Now we come to the next point, how to have peace and freedom in fear. Very important. Number one, and I think this is the most important of them all, trust in the Lord. Psalm 56 verse 11. In God I've put my trust. I will not be afraid. What man can do unto me? Wow, I think this is wonderful. In God I've put my trust. I want you right now to change your focus from 
from your bank account, from whatever you trust in, and put your trust in the Lord. And secondly, say, I will not be afraid anymore. I will give this situation to the Lord, because what can man do unto me? John 14 verse 1, again, these words are in red, the words of Jesus Christ himself. Let not your heart be troubled. Yeah, believe in God, believe also in me. Wow, my friend, let not your heart be troubled. Just let that trouble in your heart go away right now. Give it unto Jesus. How? Well, there it says, believe in God, believe also in me. Just give that trouble to the Lord right now, right as I talk to you. And feel the peace of the Lord for you right now. Psalm 23 verse 4. And this is the last verse for today. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now let's look at this verse again. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It is not maybe or I will never or if, no, it is... I believe we all go through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, this valley of the shadow of death, um, I've been to Israel a few times and they've taken us to the valley of the shadow of death. And it's actually a very small road on a big cliff. And you go with this big tour bus and, you know, it's like the bus is just balancing on the edges as you go through this valley. And it's definitely the valley of death. And there's also a lot of shadows. You know, it's deep. So the sun, you don't see the sun most of the time. I've been there myself. And here the Bible says, Yeah, though I walk through that valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You know, maybe whatever evil there is in your life, as I said, the financial things or your job situation, marriage, whatever, uh, please don't fear, don't be afraid, for thou art with me. The Lord is with you in that very valley of the shadow of death. The Lord is with you. As I said this, I just saw us walking through the valleys, walking through the things, but we are not alone. Jesus is with us. And I like this. Uh, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it's just the shadow of death. It's not death itself. It's just a shadow. You know, what is a shadow? If you walk into me, if you bump into me in the street, you will feel it. If you bump into my shadow, you will not feel it. And so it's just the shadow of death. But even in that valley, Jesus is with you. And I pray and hope that this Psalm 23 verse 4 just encourage you today. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful day, Lord, and thank you that we could talk about this very important topic about fear not. And Father, right now, I pray for everyone watching this video. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command fear to leave their hearts, to leave their minds, to leave them, Father. And I just pray right now, Father, like um, Psalm 23 verse 4, Lord, that we will no longer fear in the valleys, but that we will have great faith and that we will trust in you, Father, and that we will come out on the other side. Lord, where our ships might be in storms, thank you, Jesus, that you're in the ship, in the storm. And thank you, Jesus, that when we call upon you today, Jesus, I just know that you say to every storm, be still. Be still, Lord, and thank you that every wave come down right now in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ to everyone watching this video. Amen. Well, I'm glad that I could share this powerful message with you about fear not. And my friend, go through this week and be strong and be courageous. Be like a lion. Be full of the power and the love of Jesus Christ. And remember, fear not. From me, Lawrence. Goodbye and God bless.